The S&P hit a record high, Kathy Wood's ARK has launched a new space fund, and Microsoft has struck a $22 billion deal to bring augmented reality to the U.S. Army. Let's take a look back at the biggest stories of the week in business, tech, and money, plus some that you might have missed. It's time for a Headline Rewind. If you want to be in the know, be sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Hey there, Dave here, trying a bit of a new format today. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. And of course, by using the trusty old like button, it was a big week in the market. The S&P 500 hit an impressive new milestone for the first time ever. The index crossed the 4,000 mark. That happened on Thursday. That is up 80% from its March 2020 low. President Biden unveiled his $2 trillion infrastructure plan that focused on clean energy and fighting climate change. 621 billion of that is for infrastructure such as roads roads, bridges, and clean transportation. And while the investment size is certainly staggering, some are not expecting an immediate impact on the economy. And instead, they forecast a gradual effect that will be felt over the long run. Overall, investors are banking on the combination of stimulus, the commitment from the Fed to maintain low interest rates, and the reopening of the economy due to the vaccination rollouts across the country. Tesla is cruising past expectations in its latest quarterly report for deliveries. The electric auto company delivered a record of nearly 185,000 vehicles globally in the first quarter, that topping the previous record of just over 180,000 that was hit in the previous quarter. Q1 volume got a boost from the early Model Y ramp in China, where Tesla says it's receiving a strong reception for the fully electric SUV. Tesla began production of the Model Y in its Shanghai factory last year. And Tesla wasn't the only car company with a strong quarter. U.S. automakers across the board experienced a rebound in the first three months of 2021. General Motors reported a 4% jump in sales to just over 642,000 vehicles. Fiat Chrysler's U.S. division saw a rise of 5% to nearly 470,000 thanks to demand from Jeep and Ram pickup trucks. And Toyota's U.S. sales grew 22% to over 600,000 vehicles. The recovery comes despite a chip shortage that has put a cap on production. And in other car news, or fake news, Volkswagen's attempt at an April Fool's joke prompted more raised eyebrows than laughs. In a marketing stunt gone wrong, the automaker said that it was permanently changing its name to Volkswagen to signal a shift to a future of electric vehicles. Although it was meant to be a lighthearted April Fool's joke, many people, including equity research analysts and reporters, thought that the news was real. We'll see if the SEC has to get involved. This could be a first for an April Fool's joke. And positive signs for the labor market, the U.S. adding 916,000 jobs in March. That's more than double the figure from February and the most since August. Leisure and hospitality, the hardest hit sector during the pandemic, added 280,000 jobs as consumers returned to restaurants and gradually began to travel again. Earlier this week, American Airlines said that travel bookings have recovered to 90% of pre-pandemic levels. With the rebound in jobs, the unemployment rate has dropped to 6% from 6.2% in February, and in April of 2020, that unemployment rate had shot up to nearly 15%. Compass, the tech-focused real estate brokerage backed by SoftBank, began trading on the New York Stock Exchange on Wednesday at a $7 billion valuation. Compass is a popular platform used by 19,000 real estate brokers to leverage artificial intelligence and software tools in order to sell homes for clients. Even though Compass was only founded in 2012, it has already accounted for $152 billion in transactions last year. That's the equivalent to 4% of the U.S. market. Revenue growth for 2020 was 56%, but losses totaled $270 million, and despite the recognizable brand name and strong growth, demand for shares was uninspiring. The firm initially sought out to sell 36 million shares for $23 to $26 a pop. The lukewarm response resulted in Compass dropping the price down to $18 and the sale of just 25 million shares. The other IPO from the week worth mentioning is Coursera. The education tech company skyrocketed 36% in its market debut on Wednesday. That gives it a market valuation of just under $6 billion. The company was founded in 2011 by two Stanford professors and now offers more than 4,000 online courses from over 200 schools and companies. These online education platforms are becoming incredibly popular as prospective students grow skeptical of the mounting costs of higher education. Current 
Currently, Coursera has 77 million registered learners. 33 million of those came to Coursera during the pandemic. There is a lot of money to be made in the future of education. The global education market is set to reach at least $10 trillion by 2030. Lululemon reported earnings better than expected, but the results were overshadowed by mixed full-year guidance. As is the case for many retailers, digital sales numbers are the key indicator for future success, and Lulu nailed it in that respect. Online sales jumped 92% from a year earlier. Sales in both the women's and men's divisions grew double digits, but management warned that variants in the coronavirus could hurt demand and cause supply chain disruptions. After hitting three $300 a share back in June, the stock has barely budged. Even though it began selling the popular workout mirror in the previous quarter, a product seen by many to be a rival to Peloton. Microsoft is bringing augmented reality to the military. The tech giant is inking a massive $22 billion deal with the U.S. Army to supply 120,000 custom-made AR headsets over a 10-year period. The deal advances the Army's integrated visual augmentation system program from the prototype phase, which has been in development since 2018, to the production phase. The headsets, based on Microsoft's HoloLens and augmented by the company's Azure Cloud Services. The U.S. government is becoming a lucrative repeat customer for Microsoft. In 2019, Microsoft beat out Amazon for a $10 billion contract to provide cloud services to the Defense Department. And ARK Invest, the ultra-popular investment management company led by Wall Street celebrity Kathy Wood, they're launching their newest ETF, the ARK Space Exploration and Innovation Fund. The fund, which trades under the ticker ARKX, picked up $281 million from investors in its debut on Tuesday, but that's not without a fair share of criticism. Investors, along with the media, are questioning whether the fund really is representative as a space opportunity for investors investment, with holdings such as Netflix, Amazon, Alphabet, and a handful of Chinese e-commerce companies. And that is your Headline Rewind for the week. Before we go, please take a second to let the YouTube algorithm know that you liked this video. Tell me something interesting down in the comments. I'm going to reply to as many as I possibly can. And that is the latest from here. My name's Dave Hansen. I'll see you back there for the next Hey There Dave here.